LGBT history and figures that we can use for our struggles today. Absolutely. Now, we organize with lots of other groups, but we remain democratic and independent because this allows us to take on those people that want to maintain second class citizenship and want to stand in the way of equality for LGBT people. And that's why we're here today. We're here not only to build a community for marriage equality, but also to march and call out those people that are funding hate, funding bigotry. And so, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. I think he's going to stand on this lower ledge. Um, Doug Benson from Marry Me, Minnesota. Is that? So, without further ado, Doug Benson. Hello. Hello. Well, it's nice to see so many people out here. It's so important to show up. And it's, it's important to show up because we really cannot hire anyone to manage our civil rights. The only way that happens is if we show up as citizens at events like this, show up in the legislators' offices, show up at city hall, and, and demand our, our equal rights. Um, let me just uh, say a couple of things about, uh, about uh, the organization that I'm here representing and the executive director of Marry Me Minnesota. This is an organization that adheres to this idea that you cannot hire someone to manage your civil rights. We knew that. That's why we went forward and uh, sued the state of Minnesota for the right to marry. We are currently in, uh, we just had our appeals hearing uh, last uh, we, uh, and uh, we, uh, we are currently waiting for a ruling on, on that. We were dismissed at the lower court level, and then uh, now we're in the appeals process. We're suing to overturn the uh, Minnesota statutory ban on civil rights. Now, people are, you know, are curious as to how this works out with the anti-gay marriage amendment that is now in place. Well, we can't get married now. And regardless of what happens, in 2012, in November, whether it passes or fails, we are still not going to be able to get married because there is a statutory ban on same-sex marriage. And so we are about trying to overturn that in the courts. We, we filed our case on uh, May, May 11th of 2010, and we intend to continue all the way to the Supreme Court, the Minnesota Supreme Court in order to get the uh, statutory ban overturned. So even if we are successful, and I believe we can be successful in stopping the, the anti-gay marriage amendment from succeeding next November, if we're successful, we still have to overturn the statutory ban on marriage equality in order for us to have marriage equality in Minnesota. And also, to that end, um, uh, in the legislature, also adhering to this idea that you can't hire someone to manage your civil rights. We didn't listen to the organizations, we didn't listen to the politicians who said that it's not the right time, that you can't just go ahead and do this. You know, who do you think you are? Well, you know, if enough time passes and you don't see any progress, you start going, somebody has to do this. Maybe we're supposed to do it. I don't know. Let's do it. So. Uh, I brought a piece of legislation to legislators uh, that uh, would uh, equalize all of the marriage statutes in the state so that they were gender neutral and same-sex couples would be able to get married. That was uh, introduced in 2008 by Senator John Marty and Representative Phyllis Kahn, and it was reintroduced in 2009, and it has been once again introduced in 2011, right at the end of the session. So that is a marriage equality bill that is in play in the legislature for three biennia in a row, and and that is out there. That is a tool for us to use. You, you can't move forward. You can't progress unless you move forward. You've got to, you know, try to go for the thing that is going to take the action that is going to produce the result that you want. Uh, 
uh, you know, the idea that you can kind of tiptoe your way up to equality is a discredited concept, and it was very much frowned upon by Martin Luther King, who compared incrementalism to and, and, uh, to stand stillism, as he said, and do nothingism. It just doesn't go. You've got to go for the uh, your full civil rights, and that's what we've been trying to do, both in the legislature, Marriage Equality Minnesota, and Marry Me Minnesota, in the courts. And so, just let me. This has had absolutely no coverage by the media. The the the, the legislation has not. The the marriage bill has had very little coverage. But oh boy, as soon as there is an amendment. You know, to kick the asses of the gay people in this state, all of a sudden it's like, ho, oh, what's going on here? You know, then all of our attention is turned to that. But we have we, we have these positive, uh, you know, tools that we can use at this point to uh, to try and gain marriage equality. The House bill is House Bill 17 is House File 1710. It's still in play and will be through the end of the next legislative session in 2012. The Senate bill is 1427. Senate file 1427. It's still in play. You can call your legislators. You can demand that the bill be brought up for. It can be brought up for a, uh, a committee hearing. And it really, you know, yes, we know that the Republicans are in charge of the legislature. This is not going to happen. You know, a tremendous chance. But in fact, it doesn't matter who was in the, those offices. If 10,000 people showed up at the Capitol and occupied the place, we're going to have marriage equality. It all depends on us showing up. And that's if it's one person, that's one better than nothing. 10,000 would be really, really good. Then, we could, then we'd see some see some movement, I think. And if, you know, the, uh, the, the, the DFL took control of the legislature in 2007, and in starting in 2009, it was like two to one DFL, okay? They want to trash a lot of people because there are a lot of good DFL legislators, but the fight was not against the Republicans. There weren't enough of them to make a difference, to stop anything. The fight during that period was to get the DFL to make a move. Even though we had a Republican governor, that legislation could have been passed and should have been passed by both houses of the legislature. What we wound up with was an informational hearing, you know, in the last uh, session. And that's not good enough. So the lesson from that is we have to show up. We, you know, we can't be all happy just because we get DFL legislators in office, we have to ride their asses probably even more, you know, in order to get some action because they can they can stop, you know, the legislation just as easily. And they really don't want to deal with this. You know, it's a difficult issue. It's an emotional issue. And uh, so we really, really have to push, no matter who is in office, Governor Dayton, the legislature, all of them. And so just to, uh, just to recap, um, we have this bill in the legislature. Please show up next session. Demand that it be passed. It also helps, you know, the fight against the amendment to be pushing in a forward direction. And uh, as well, the, uh, the marriage equality case, Marry Me Minnesota, marrymeminnesota.org. Uh, marriage equality, the legislative organization, we do not take any money. There's just no point, and it just keeps us from taking kinds of action that we need to take anyway. The, uh, the lawsuit, if you can go to marrymeminnesota.org, we do need money for that. We have lawyers to pay, and we have no paid staff. It's an all-volunteer organization. The money that we collect goes directly to pay for legal expenses, and they are, they are mounting up. So I sure appreciate your help in that way. I'm just going to, uh, okay, I just, uh, just want to finish up here and thank you all for coming out, showing up. This is what really makes a democracy work. It's the only thing that makes a democracy work. You can't hire, you just can't hire people.
to manage your stuff. Every, you know, your 